Okay, what we've got here is an acquisition where the carrying value of the subsidiary's assets were not at fair value, and the revaluation is done in the subsidiary itself. But how will this look if we don't do the revaluation within the subsidiary, but it happens in the consolidation worksheet? Now, a really good reason why this may not happen in the subsidiary is it may be inventory that's being revalued. Um, it may be that property plant and equipment is being held um, using the cost model and the fair value is higher, so you can't actually take it up. So there's a variety of reasons why this may take place. So what I'm going to do first is just copy across what happens if we do this in the subsidiary itself. I'm just going to call this in subsidiary. So that just gives us a baseline to work from. And then I'm going to strip out all the effects that we've had previously. And we're going to set this back to 100. I'm going to get rid of the deferred tax liability and we're going to get rid of the revaluation surplus. Now, I'm going to leave the debit investment credit cash because that's happened. Um, doesn't really matter where this happens, but that's the entry that will happen in the parents' accounts. Now, what will change is this account, or sorry, this set of these this transaction won't happen in the subsidiary's accounts um, because the revaluation is not actually occurring there. I'm going to move this down slightly. Consolidation worksheet. And so this will all happen now in the subsidiaries, um, so not in the subsidiaries accounts, but as a fair value adjustment in the consolidation worksheet. And the only difference we have to make to the original entry is this isn't a revaluation surplus anymore. It's credit, fair value adjustment. The amount is the same. So in actual fact, not much changes there. So let's put this in. So we debit land 150. We credit fair value adjustment 105. And we credit DTL 45. We can bring all these up. So we don't need this. The investment elimination entry is very, very similar to what happened previously. We have share capital and we have retained earnings sitting in the subsidiary, which we eliminate through these two debits. So we debit 300 and we debit 200. The revaluation surplus is not part of pre-acquisition equity anymore because there was no revaluation in the subsidiary. This becomes debit fair value adjustment and that is the 105. Credit investment 700 just as before and we debit goodwill 95 and there you have it all of these entries have happened in the consolidation worksheet and when we look at it now it is exactly the same as what we did if the revaluation happened in the subsidiary so it doesn't actually matter where the revaluation happens you are going to end up with the same answer it just some of the accounts and some of the actual transactions may be slightly different.